Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. Today we're taking a look at the AR Wing Pro by Sonic Model. Before I get into the content, I need to let you know this video is sponsored by Banggood, who sent me this wing for review. I'd like to say thanks for Banggood for supporting the channel and by providing equipment for me to review for you guys so you can get a first look at what you get before you spend your money. If you're in the market for any of the Sonic Model products, including the Zod Copilot or the Zod Dart or Drift, or of course the AR Wing Pro, make sure you check Banggood out. And as of this video, they're one of the few retailers that actually has this plane in stock. The marketing material for the AR Wing Pro says it is a new benchmark for FPV wings. So today we're gonna to take a look at the airframe, what I noticed coming out of the box. We're gonna put the motor up on the judge and see how it performs. And then I'll cover the hardware and the build out specs I plan to use for my build. Before we get into the hardware, let's take a look at the specifications real quick. The airplane's made from EPP foam and it's that nice molded variety, so nice and smooth up top. The wingspan is a thousand millimeters or almost 40 inches, about 39 and a third inches. It has a length of 450 millimeters from front to back. The motor recommendation for the PNP version is the Sunny Sky 2216 1400 kV. And as you can see on the judge, I've already got the motor and prop mounted up. I've got some batteries charged, so we'll spin it up and take a look at how the motor performs as well. Hey, if you like the work I do here on RC Video Reviews, please consider joining me on Patreon. For about the price of a cup of coffee, you can help me keep making videos just like this one. If you'd like to help out, there's a link in the description and on your screen. In the PNP version, they also include a 40 amp ESC with Sonic Model branding. And notice it's got a very long battery lead. That's because the ESC compartment is back here and you gotta run the battery lead all the way up front to reach the battery because the battery sits up here. The servo recommendation are two analog Metal Gear 9 gram servos. And again, they're included in the PNP version of the kit. The recommended propeller is an eight x five two bladed. I've already got that mounted on the motor. So we'll test that in just a little bit. And then the battery recommendation is a 4S32 to 3500 LiPo or a Zod Lion Pack 18650 4-cell 2P7000. In the instructions, they reference some recommended speed. So they say 31 kilometers per hour for minimum, maximum being 130 kilometers per hour. And with this motor setup, they say you should get about 75 kilometers per hour at about five and a half amps. I watched the Maiden video by Bonafide Pirate and he was definitely cruising around right in that five, five and a half amp range. So he may be doing a little bit of tuning work or some adjustments, but I, when I watched his Maiden video, he was somewhere around that five amp mark at cruise speed. The max recommended takeoff weight for this airplane is 1,425 grams. So for my motor testing, I'm gonna use that number as the basis for thrust to weight ratio. The book also calls for a little bit of reflex on the elevons at one and a half to two millimeters and maximum throw at 12 millimeters. Okay, let's take the wings off and take a look at the airframe. The fuselage really is the bread and butter of this plane. And when they say this is a benchmark for FPV planes, I think most of that resides in what they've done on the fuselage and it's very clever. Let's start out by looking at the front of the plane first. Notice that I've got a nose piece on here that has a cutout for a camera. That pops out and you have access right here on this tray to go through the fuselage and run your wires inside the airframe so you can run connections to your computer or your VTX as needed. And these nose plugs look changeable because they're keyed on the side. You probably can glue them in if you're gonna be permanent, but I don't think you have to glue them in. I think you can get away with just popping it in there and letting it latch into place in those keys. There's a pretty positive lock and the airflow kind of pushes it right up against the airframe. The next big piece to notice is the canopy. It's got a very positive latching mechanism with a nice big hole for your finger, so easy to pop that on and off. And then the equipment bay is pretty large. It's substantial. And you can see you got wires from the wings already laid in the equipment bay, ready to be connected to your flight computer or whatever else you plan on using for control inside. And then also notice there's a battery tray with a hard plastic base and a battery strap already in place. They're pretty clear, that's where the battery goes. One of the big things that I wanna point out about the way they've designed this canopy is the airflow. And you notice there's intake vents here, here, and here. And then when you pop the cover off, you can see that that intake carries through on this side, this side, and right in the center for the motor. So I'm really happy about that. I live in a very hot climate and when you have FPV equipment tucked away inside this foam enclosure, it can get really hot in there. So real big props to Sonic Model for the ventilation design 
It is excellent. It's among the best I've ever seen on a plane because it's got a substantial intake and then on the way out, there's plenty of ventilation for the air to move through the plane and it even hits the motor on the way out. The second compartment is where the ESC goes and you can see that ventilation also goes through the ESC compartment. It comes out right here where these wires are laid in and there's also a gap right there for the battery lead. So ventilation will flow through there as well. In the ESC compartment, there's another hole that'll allow wires from the motor to ingress the plane and it will also allow airflow to move out and cool off the motor on the way out of the plane as well. In addition to the main equipment compartment, there are also a couple of compartments on each side of the fuselage that are designed for things like receivers or VTXs or any other type of equipment you may decide to use. Maybe a telemetry modem, that kind of thing. So a nice cover, there is no magnetic hatch, but it uses the EPP notches to latch shut. And it's got a pull tab so you can release it as needed. And then again, they cared for ventilation by putting ingress on the front and egress right here on the back. So airflow moves right across the equipment I think that's genius. Nice move. On this side, same deal, same type of a compartment, little wood tray in there for supporting whatever equipment you want to put in there. And then the ventilation blows in and comes out the backside. As far as the wing goes, there are several quick connects that support two different connections out on the wing. So notice you've got two wires on each side. There's two and here's two coming in from each wing. There you go, two and two. So you have two electrical connections going out to the wing right here. Those connections not only provide for the servo connectivity, but any electronics that you might also want to mount out on the wing. Also notice the plywood deck. That's an attachment point for the wings. So the wings are keyed and they slide in. Then you get a thumb screw that comes right up through the bottom. And then there's the cavity for the spar. I'd say overall, the fuselage looks pretty good. I noticed a couple little issues on mine and it's kind of hard to get this on film, but there's some crinkling going on and it looks like it's part of the production process. I don't know if they have a press or a grip or what happened there, but I definitely have some crinkles right here on this side. And I have a couple more on this side. The back of the plane has a plywood firewall already installed and it includes blind nuts for your motor mount screws. Everything back there looks fine. Wires go in through the top, motor bolts on the back, and Bob's your uncle. One thing I forgot to mention about the ESC hatch, they provide a plastic cover for your GPS. And the ESC hatch also latches on with magnets. So very positive lock, I don't expect that'll go anywhere in flight. On the bottom of the plane, you'll notice there are some molding lines on the tail, in the center, and on the nose. Those are designed to accept these Teflon skid plates. Also on the bottom are recessed cavities that accept the thumb screws that lock the wings into place. One more thing about the nose, you can put any type of camera you want there. You can put your FPV camera, you can put an action cam, you can put a GoPro, whatever you want there. And they also have a cutout right here on the side for an FPV camera if you want to use that as well. So if you have a dual camera setup and you want to minimize drag, you can probably put a GoPro style camera right there and your FPV camera here. Other than the crushed foam that I have right here along the wing saddle, I don't see any other damage on the plane. Everything else looks just fine. They also include a secondary equipment hatch cover that's designed specifically for a DJI air unit. So that mounts right here and there's ventilation built in and a pull ring right there to pop the cover off. If you don't want to run a camera in the nose, you can pop that plug off and replace it with this one that's got no hole. So that'll help with things like streamlining if you choose not to run an action camera. Although I will tell you that I, again, on Bonafide Pirates video, he mentioned having to add quite a bit of weight in this little cavity in order to get the plane to balance. So just be aware of that. I think they really do intend for it to carry an action camera up front. Next up are the wings and notice they've designed these to have the servo linkages on the top of the wing. So that's the control horn. Here's the bottom of the wing. The control horn latches around a spar to give rigidity to the control surface. The pocket for the servo is right there and then the arm pops up on the top and you've got a ball linkage that goes to that control horn. Notice there's only one hole on that control horn and based on the dry fitting, it looks like that hole is well forward of the hinge line. So there may be some differential in control surface movement. Just be aware of it. I'm not saying it's good, not saying it's bad. I'm just pointing it out that there, that hole does look forward to the hinge line. One other thing I want to point out regarding the control surfaces, when I got mine, this corner was definitely bent well down. When I took it out of the box, it was tweaked like that. It's been resting for about a day. I've had it out of the box and I might hit it with a little bit of steam to loosen that up, but just be aware of it. I think they might need to work on their packaging just a little bit because this was definitely bent on mine. Here's a look down the leading edge of the starboard wing and that looks good, nice and straight. Here's the wing saddle area. This is the locking tab that connects that piece of plywood on the fuselage wing saddle. Here are the quick connect pins for the servo lead and any other electronics you want to put out on the wing. And then here's the receptacle for the wing spar. So yeah, aside from that little curl on the aileron, everything else on the wing looks like it's in good shape. No other concerns.
We'll just take a quick look at the port wing. Nice straight leading edge, no issues on the control surface. Everything is straight there. Same type of spar on the bottom that locks into the control horn right there. They do provide location markers for CA hinges if you choose to do that. I'm not gonna worry about that too much because to me, this one's a cruiser and this EPP foam is pretty tough. So I'm gonna go ahead and fly with this. They do have one other trick up their sleeve as well. If you don't have enough room in the equipment bays on the plane, they have these little plugs right here on the wings where you can add more equipment out here if you want to. So let's say you have a high powered VTX and you really wanna separate it from your radio equipment like your GPS and your receiver, you can mount that out here on the wing. Here's the quick connect point on the wing. Here's where that quick connect point egress is, and here are the wire channels for your servo and wing equipment if you choose to use it. The wing tip has plywood, as does the winglet, so when you attach these, you can either glue them or screw them or both. So there's a look at the winglet on the wing tip. For hardware, there's a bag of ball links, including the push rods for the servo and the control horn. They include a couple of pre-cut pieces of plywood. I'm not exactly sure what these are for yet, but I'll figure it out. A couple of screws to mount your motor, and it looks like servo screws, but I'm not sure about those either yet. But definitely motor screws. Thumb screws to mount the wings onto the fuselage. And I showed you these earlier, but man, I really like these Teflon skids. They're very slick and they're very durable. So I like these a lot, and those go on the bottom of the plane. They also include a couple little Velcro straps that you can use in various places on the plane. It looks like a Velcro strap for the battery, nice and heavy. If you look at all the videos out there, you'll see a nice decal arrangement on this plane. I didn't get any. That's what I got in my kit. And finally, the wing spar, they did something kind of cool here. They put a little plastic key on there that'll give you the correct lateral distance on the plane. So when you insert the spar into the wing, it stops right where it's supposed to, right there. Cool, huh? Speaking of the spar, look at how far that spar goes into the wing. It's not very far, although the wing itself does feel quite rigid. So I believe there's a spar under these notches right here and probably another one right there. That's what these notches normally indicate. So they probably do have spars out there, but as far as the ones where it attaches to the wing, it's actually kind of short right there. That's where it stops. But when I put the wing together, it still, it does feel pretty rigid. I had a little bit of a problem with the wing trying to continue to crush or not fit on the seam. All you really need to do is take a small straight slot screwdriver and just kind of lift the foam up. And it, when you do that, it'll seat right in there just the way it's supposed to. So that is the correct look on that plane. So when you do yours, make sure that Make sure that foam is not folded under on the fuselage. That's it for the airframe. Regarding the electronics configuration, I'll be using a Crossfire Nano Receiver and a Maytech F722 WPX flight controller. I've already got the motor mounted on the judge. Let's go ahead and spool it up and see how it performs. Before I start on the motor test, I did want to give you a quick look at the instruction sheet. It's not great. The pictures are really pretty bad. They're probably some of the worst I've ever seen. The text is okay. You can read it and it's big enough, but the pictures and graphics really just not very good on this instruction sheets. It might be worth it to find the PDF copy. I'm sure the graphics on that will be better than what I see on this printed copy. I've got the Sunny Sky 2216 1400 KV mounted up on the judge. I'm using the stock 8x5 prop and I'll be testing with 4 cell 2200 batteries. All I'm looking for is efficiency numbers, thrust, watts, volts, amps, and sag. Okay, here we go with the first test. I'll be looking for RPM and thrust and we'll get the rest of the numbers after the run. I saw 1,484 grams of thrust at 16,740 RPM. I'll check that in post just to make sure I got the peak numbers. And yes, I'm aware that there's a difference between static and dynamic amp draw. We're just doing static here. That's all we're looking for. And by the way, for those of you who like talking about the difference between static and dynamic amp draw, I've done the testing in flight with the logging ESC from Castle, and the difference turns out to be under 10% on amperage. On the amps, 28.59. On the voltage sag, 14.94, and on the watts, 431. Okay, that's test number one. There's a fresh four cell. And here we go with test number two.
Well, that battery had its Wheaties. All right, we've got 30 on the amps, 30.15. It's 1537 on the voltage sag, 472 on the watts. All right, let me do the math real quick. Okay, here's what I came up with. Remember, this is an 8x5 generic prop. I got 28.59 amps with 14.94 on the sag, 431 watts. 1,484 grams of thrust. That gives an efficiency measure of 3.44 to one thrust over watts. I saw 16,740 RPM. Remember the max all up flying weight on this plane is 1,425 grams. With that specification, this is only a 1.04 to one power to weight ratio. So a little bit on the low side, but it's a wing, very aerodynamic and very efficient. On the second test, I saw 30.15 amps, 15.37 volts on the sag, 472 watts, 1,531 grams of thrust. That gives a 3.24 to one efficiency rating. That's thrust over watts, 17,137 RPM. Again, same weight, 1,425 grams. That yields a 1.07 to one power to weight ratio. The book, by the way, specifies this motor is 72 grams with a max constant amperage of 33 amps. So we're right under that limit with the 8.5 prop and a constant wattage rating of 540, and we're well under that at 431 and 472. 1,380 grams of thrust, and we exceeded that in both cases, 1,484 and 1,531. So as far as the motor goes, the motor did what it was supposed to do. No worries there. I think power-wise, this is definitely gonna be a cruiser. Regarding the efficiency numbers of 3.44 to one and 3.24 to one, I did a Sunny Sky 2216 1250 kV V3 motor, and that turned in about 3.94 to one. So a little bit higher, but that's also running a bigger prop. So a bigger prop tends to be a little bit more efficient. In the end, I think this motor will be just fine on this plane. Remember my power to weight assumes the maximum all up weight of 1,425 grams. So 1 1.04, a little bit low, but that again assumes worst case scenario on the weight. That's it on the motor testing. Let's wrap this video up. That wraps up my first look at the Sonic Model AR Wing Pro. I'd like to say thanks again to Banggood for sending this plane out for review. Remember, if you're in the market to get one, as of this video, they're one of the few retailers that has these things in stock, so check them out. Hey, before you take off, I just wanna let you know, a full 60% of people that watch these videos don't subscribe. If you like this kind of material and you wanna see it keep coming, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. It's very important for small channels like mine to continue growing by getting placement. More people see the video, more people subscribe, channel continues to grow. So if you like this material, please consider subscribing. Leave a comment and a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy.